Boker Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tensions both areas, Syria with United States coalition forces and Iran facing off uh, today and have been here for the last several days there. Going to get into that in just a moment. Also, North Korea. Uh, again, they have developed more accurate missiles than uh, have been expected. We're going to go into that in just a few minutes. Look also at Qatar issues that are happening there and other things as well. Let's get right into this. This is uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, General's uh, our spokesman, Dylan, who spoke the other day that we shared some of the information there about the situation near al Syria, at southern Syria, where the U.S. coalition forces have set up a deconfliction zone, according to them. Now, of course, as we already know, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia, states that this is an illegitimate deconfliction zone, that it was Russia, Iran, and uh, Syria that, that made an agreement with the U.N. Security Council on deconflict zones inside of Syria and that they were to be negotiated out, and they have not been done as of yet. But the U.S., no doubt, as we have clearly have been watching, has come inside of Syria with what it seems to be the intent to draw Iran and possibly the Syrian forces into a direct conflict so that the issue of taking down Iran can be once and for all uh, taken care of. Also, removing Bashar al-Assad from power. So that's what it seems to be from the outlook on what we're watching here. Listen to uh, uh, Mr. Dylan here and what he has to say about the situation that just occurred yesterday uh, near al Tanf and the uh, incursion between Iranian uh, pro-Syrian forces and that of the U.S. coalition. This morning, the United States conducted strikes against two technical vehicles pick up trucks with weapons that were assessed to be posing a threat to coalition and partner forces based in. Having a little bit of a difficulty with the uh, making that actually come out, but the, he does speak about that in here and what they were actually trying to do there. Uh, moving also in other news here, this is another uh, video footage here that we uh, that came out today. Alexander Kar Karula Naya uh, actually posted this video here. And this is showing that the uh, Iranian forces, uh, how they are already moving up into position uh, to seemingly to actually take on the U.S. forces there in the region. Uh, we are seeing all kinds of movement. They're bringing tanks in also by trucks as well, moving in military personnel. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a large amount of military from the Iranian Guard to begin with at this point here, but I can only imagine what could end up coming in the coming days here as the tensions are rising between uh, the pro-Syrian forces and that of the U.S. coalition inside of Syria. And it just, to me, it doesn't seem that Iran is any match for the U.S. coalition. And so, but... If they get into, if they really get into it heavily, Iran could at that point begin launching missiles uh, towards the U.S. coalition from the mainland of Iran, which I think is exactly what the coalition is hoping for to be able to justify removing Iran from power, at, but at the same time targeting Israeli civilians. That could be the catastrophe in this all. So it's definitely not a smart move from what we can see. Uh, besides what is going on there in Syria, we also have the U.S. Another video has, has just came out, uh, U.S. dropping phosphorus uh, in Raqqa. And monstrosity amount of phosphorus falling down on the local city there in Raqqa. Uh, very concerning there because phosphorus is just absolutely devastating to any humans that are on the ground. And although we realize that ISIS is certainly a major problem in the Middle East there and must be dealt with, at the same time they always take civilians captive, uh, they take women hostages and, and use them as sex slaves. And when this phosphorus is being dropped down like this, rather than doing actual combat on the streets there, you're killing, no doubt, many, many civilians along the way. We have no confirmation of this, though, uh, that this is actually happening. But it's just uh, very sad to see that, that uh, phosphorus is being used on populated areas rather than actually directly combating and trying to remove these people. Uh, also going into Yonhap News, uh, article here coming out this year about North Korea, their missiles that they launched the other day, says that North Korea uh, uh, launches cruise missiles, uh, launch, 
launches cruise missile threat, it seems to have improved precision. And that's something that is worrying, no doubt, for the NATO allies because not only are their cruise missiles getting new precision, but they also have the huge arsenal there of, uh, of the uh, nuclear warheads as well. In this article here, the North Korean nuclear issue must be resolved creatively. The diplom diplomatic security line is still undecided, uh, undecided, excuse me. And uh, that's on dongae.com. Uh, the article states here the key words of the message that President Moon Jae-in presided over at the Nati National Security Council on August 8th are maximum friendship and creative plan. It is the intent to clean up the conflict with the United States over the, the uh, deployment, dipl excuse me, deployment of uh, the Sad Thad Advanced Missile Defense System and look for a new approach to North Korea. And a month after his inauguration, Moon showed an emotional gesture towards North Korea and sought a policy shift towards North Korea, but North Korea was in a state of frustration as it refused to visit North Korea and responded uh, to with missiles. Oh gosh, that, like I said, friends, it's just so tense all over the world. Also, very interesting things that are happening as well. Again, Qatar now on the bad boy list um, with the uh, coalition there, in the, not the coalition, the U.S. coalition, but uh, have fallen out with the Saudis, the Egyptians, uh, the Yemenite government, many of the other of the, of the Arab League have come against Qatar claiming that they are arming uh, terrorists inside of the Middle East. Well, as RT reporter once stated, that's like the pot calling the kettle black. Saudis and the Qataris are both guilty of arming and funding terrorists inside the Middle East. Why Qatar is being targeted? Don't really know. Interesting to say, though, the Turkish military is also moving troops to Qatar uh, based on the latest situation with the Saudis. And also Russia, Qatar, to discuss regional bilateral issues during their uh, Thani's Moscow visit. One thing I've noticed that every every country that falls out of good graces, whether it be with NATO or the Arab League, uh, United Arab League, there um, always ends up becoming an ally and friend of Russia. What is going on? I mean, I know they're trying to bring about a new world order, and they, there's claims that Russia is against the new world order. But then again, some of the relationships that President Putin has uh, clearly is new world order advocates. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget this Saturday on Direct TV Channel 367, 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, 9 p.m. Central, of course, 7 p.m. on the uh, Pacific Time. You can catch Israeli News Live, the prophetic insights. And I guarantee you, you do not want to miss this broadcast. Uh, some of the broadcasts will probably not air on Israeli News Live YouTube because of uh, the, the deep biblical impact. They'll probably air instead on the Noon Institute. So you might want to check out over there. Make sure you subscribe. We'll put a link to that channel there inside the description box. But uh, don't forget to watch that. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Share.